When you're standing underneath the Apatosaurus, you look up and you're looking at this organism that is an amazing piece of work. It's got a neck that looks like a suspension bridge with a head on one end and a tail on the other, a neck capable of sustaining an enormous amount of weight. It's got legs built like columns of a Grecian temple to maintain that weight. It's an eating machine with a huge rib cage to allow for a big stomach, big intestines, everything else. And it's a really amazing expression of the complexity of nature. Well, dinosaurs exhibit several different trends that, that are common throughout vertebrate life. One of them is a trend toward gigantism. And to be giant, you have to have a lot of support for your body. You can't just be a, you know, a sack of water walking around. The big sky country of Montana was once a dinosaur stomping ground. Here, paleontologist Christy Curry Rogers searches for fossilized remains of the thunder lizards. Curry Rogers suspects that her finds contain clues to the dinosaurs' gigantic proportions. For a number of years, people have thought that dinosaurs might have taken 100 years to reach their adult size, or even more than that, 120 years. And my work is focused on how dinosaurs were growing, and I'm realizing that they didn't grow like that at all. Bone is an extraordinary building material. Because it is living tissue, Bone can respond to increased weight and stress by becoming thicker, growing. But the bones of most modern reptiles grow very slowly. So scientists believe that dinosaurs, too, grew slowly. Curry Rogers saw things differently. There's a good evolutionary reason for growing quickly. If you're a small, juvenile individual and you're running around and you're being chased by predators on a daily basis and you're fighting for your life, it makes sense that you have to grow big to, to maintain your, your existence, basically. You have to grow fast so you can beat out the predators and, and be an adult and reach sexual maturity in time to actually reproduce and send your genes on through the, through the gene pool. In order to determine how quickly they grew, Curry Rogers looked deep within the bones themselves. She realized that like tree rings, bones preserve a detailed record of growth rate. You can look at the outside of a bone and it, it can give you an idea of external things that are going on, but to really read the story of an animal's life, you have to look at the inside. The first thing you do when you want to look at a dinosaur bone under a microscope is you have to, to cut a chunk out of a bone somehow so that you have a workable piece. And usually that piece lies right in the center of the bone because that's where bones start growing and they grow throughout the, the life of a dinosaur at that point. To get at this evidence, Curry Rogers cuts a wafer-thin cross-section of a massive bone. The cross-section is ground a tenth of a millimeter thin. This slice actually provides a view back in time. After all the cutting and grinding and polishing, hours and hours of finger grinding off work, we end up with this beautiful thin section of a dinosaur bone. The first time you place a slide of a bone underneath the microscope, you're the first person that's ever seen what the inside of that bone holds and the story that it tells. You can see a snapshot of everything that happened in that animal's growth history up to the moment that it died. The crucial snapshot will reveal arrangements of light in the bones, patterns created by blood vessels. If the size, shape, and placement of the patterns is uniform, the animal was growing slowly. But the evidence points the other way. She finds chaotic designs of light. The sizes and shapes are dissimilar, their placement irregular. Just by looking at that very basic thing, the pattern of blood vessels, we can tell that dinosaurs were growing much faster than modern reptiles like crocodiles and lizards and snakes grow. 
And so if you can imagine a dinosaur that begins from an egg that's only about the size, a little bit larger maybe than a grapefruit, growing to an animal this enormous, it could have done it in about 10 or 12 years, and the bone remodeling that we see and the, the great amounts of blood vessels and nerves that are supplying these bones tell us that this animal is growing very quickly and it was changing throughout its life.